so in the last video i explained the concept of models and how to store them in a database of your choice so be sure to check that one out and uh, in this video i'll explain crud operations and uh, how they relate to restful apis and we will be using the fluent model to perform complex queries on our swift models so to start off let's see what crud is so crud means create retrieve update and delete so these four are the basic functions of persisting storage you can perform most of the actions required for your application using only these four operations and restful apis provide a way for the clients to call the crud operations in your application i will include a starter project in the description of this video so you can code along with me in this video and in this video i'll show you how we can implement each of these functions for our periodic table application now we can start by implementing a create function so you can download and open the starter project from the link in the description of this video and follow along with me so this is what our starter project looks like here we can go to the roots.swift file and at the end of the file we can create our post request So what this function does is register a new root at API slash element, which will accept a post request and returns a future periodic table element. And inside this function, this line would decode the requests JSON because we'll be sending the parameters in JSON into a periodic table. And uh, this is very simple because our periodic table class confirms to the content class and we're using the flat map to function to convert this future back into the original periodic table object and inside of this closure we are passing an element which will save this value to the database so we can go ahead and run this application so our application is running on our local host and we can now test this request out in postman so we can test this request out in postman we'll just copy the localhost url followed by API and element. And in the body, we can add these two parameters. So this request is running successfully. Great, so we have now implemented the create function. So our next function is retrieve. And uh, retrieve basically means to extract all the data that we have stored in our database. So for our periodic table applications, retrieve will consist of two separate operations. One is to retrieve all of the elements of the periodic table and the second is to retrieve a single specific element. So back to our Xcode file, in our roots.swift file, we'll add a new get request at the end of the file. So what this function will do is set up a get request with the endpoints API and element and this will return an array of our periodic table class objects wrapped inside a future. And here inside the function, we are using the database query which is dot all function. So this query is equivalent to the SQL query select star from periodic table. So this will list all of those elements. Let's try and run this application. So our application is running and uh, we can try out this function in our postman. So I'll just add the URL, set it to a get request and send the request. So as you can see, this gives us a list of all of those elements in our database. So we can stop the server for now and we can set up our second request, which will give us a single specific element. Now, Vapor's powerful type safety for parameters extends to models and confirms to a parameter class. So to make this work, we'll head to the periodic table class and we'll add another extension here, which is parameter. And now we can set up our get function.
So here we have set up a new route to the endpoints API element and the parameter, which is the unique ID of the element of the periodic table. This function returns a periodic table element wrapped in a future. So what this line will do is extract the element from the request using the parameters function. This computed property will perform all of the work necessary to get the element from the database. And uh, this will also handle all of the error cases when the element doesn't exist or when the data type is wrong. So we can run our application again. And test this out in Postman app. Here we'll add the ID of the element as the endpoint. And here you can see the element with the ID number one is returned. So we can stop the server for now. So our next function is update. So an update method basically means to update an existing resource inside of our database and change it to a new value. And uh, in RESTful APIs, update is done using a put request. And that request contains the data for the new information. So let's see how we can implement this in our project. So what this function does is, it creates a route for a put request with the endpoint API element and the unique ID of the element of the periodic table. So here we are using the flat map to method to extract both the parameters. So one of these parameters comes from the database and one of these parameters comes from the data that the user sends us. So here inside that closure, we'll get two variables which is the element and the updated element. And updated element is the one that the user has sent in the request. And we can update the existing element with the updated element data. And lastly, we can save that data into our database. So we'll run our application and see how this works. Our application is running. We can test this out in Postman app. So here we had previously added the value of oxygen to symbol O and its index is second. We can try and update this particular value. So our final method so here will add the index to delete at the end of our uh, endpoints. We can change this to delete request particular to a resource request. in our database. And so let's see how we can create an API to delete something from our database. We can add some value to update that. So back to our roots.swift file. Here we can create a method to make a delete. Let's say we call this helium, just to give you guys an example. And send this request. So what this function does is create a route for a delete so API. Forgot to add and with the endpoints API element and the parameter of the periodic table, which and is ID, the index two of our yeah. database has been updated to helium. Here we are trying to extract, extract that exact, exact element from our database and we use the dot delete on and extract request it. to delete that particular object. We can stop our server now. And finally we are using the transform method to transform this request into an HTTP status of 204 which is no content since we are uh, since this function returns an HTTP status. So let's try and run this app. And we can test this out in Postman. So here again, let's try to delete the element with the ID2. And we'll just mention the request as a delete. And it doesn't require any parameters. So we'll just send the request. And we are getting the 204 no content, which means that this element at uh, index 2 has been deleted. So we can check this again by calling our get all method. So this is the get method which will return all of the models in our database. So as you can see, the second element has been deleted. So that was delete function. And we can go ahead and stop our app. So now we have seen all four types of methods in our CRUD operations. 
in the next video we'll be talking about some more database queries that can be done using fluent library thank you guys for watching